properties of waves. A wave is a disturbance that transports energy from one place to another without transporting matter. Waves have different properties that can affect the amount of energy that it can transmit and the speed the wave will travel. To understand the properties that waves have, we need to go over the parts of a wave. A transverse wave has a crest, a trough, and a resting position. The crest is the highest part of the wave, the trough is the lowest part of the wave, and the resting position is where the wave would be if there was no disturbance moving through it. The parts of a longitudinal wave include compression and rarefaction. Compression is the distance between the wave is shorter or compressed, and in rarefaction, the distance of the wave is more spread out. The wavelength of a wave is the distance between one part of the wave and the same spot on the next wave. The wavelength of a transverse wave can be measured from crest to crest or trough to trough. The wavelength of a longitudinal wave can be measured from one end of one compression to the end of the next compression, or from the end of one rarefaction to the end of the next rarefaction. The frequency of a wave is the number of times that pattern repeats in a given time. The frequency of a wave is measured in hertz. The unit hertz is the same as one per second. The more waves in a given time, the higher the frequency it has. So the top wave here has 6.5 waves in one second, and the bottom one has 3.5 waves in the same second. The top here has three waves in one second, and the bottom one has two waves in the same second. The amplitude of a wave is the maximum distance the wave moves from its rest position. The greater the distance from the resting position to the crest, the greater the amplitude for a transverse wave. Longitudinal waves are a little bit trickier. In a higher amplitude longitudinal wave, the compression waves are very close and the rarefaction waves are very far apart. In a lower amplitude longitudinal wave, the compression waves are farther apart and the rarefaction waves are actually closer together. Now that you know some wave properties, let's talk about the relationship between amplitude and energy. Amplitude and energy have a positive relationship. As one goes up, so does the other. The energy of the wave is the square of the amplitude. Since energy is the square of the amplitude, if you double the amplitude, your wave will have four times the energy. Also, if you half the amplitude, each wave will end up with only a quarter of the energy. Frequency and wavelength have an inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down. As you can see, as you decrease the wavelength, more waves are able to travel in the time frame of the one second. So as you decrease the wavelength, you actually increase the frequency, giving wavelength and frequency an inverse relationship. The speed of the wave can be found by multiplying the frequency and wavelength. This is the formula for speed. A wave has a speed of 40 hertz and a wavelength of 10 meters. What's the speed of the wave? To do this, you plug it into the formula and you put 40 hertz for the frequency, 10 meters for the wavelength, and multiply them, giving you a speed of 400 meters per second. Let's review. Which one has the highest frequency? That's right, it's letter B. Which one has the longest wavelength? If you guess C, you're correct. What happens to the energy of the wave if you triple the amplitude? It will actually increase by nine times the amount. A wave has a speed of 20 hertz and a wavelength of 15 meters. What's the speed of the wave? The speed is 300 meters per second. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video.
Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.